Hello, hello, hello. We are live. Welcome. I'm so excited to see everybody. Well, not see you, but I know you're here <laughs> in the chat. We're going to dive right in. I put up a poll on the community tab and you guys voted or girls, <laughs> chickies, I should say, voted. Uh, the choice was between really, really cool alcohol ink things that I had been learning. This was a tutorial on YouTube that I found and had just kind of discovered. I even framed some of my own stuff on alcohol ink techniques and the choice, I'm gonna try to put that down without it falling, or gel printing. And you all voted, it was kind of close, gotta say, but you voted for gel printing. So I thought since we're not gonna do alcohol inks today, I thought that I would just really quickly kind of show you some of the things that I had been playing with. I've been playing with lots of different techniques my good friend Tiffany Solario is here helping me in the chat. So if you have questions, she's there. Hi, everybody. So excited to see you all. Um, she taught me how to do this particular technique. I'll link to her video down below. But look at some of these cool things that I have been exploring how to just kind of create some interesting looks. Fun story before we dive right into gel printing. This started with this print right here, and I was playing with how to get kind of like a milky look to the technique that most of us kind of know. I call it the blob. <laughs> and then I kind of combined the two to create this. How cool is that? I've been taking classes, and you can see that I've really been diving into the deep end on this type of technique over the last month, creating some really fun looks. But that's all for another day. Today, it's all about the gel plate, and it's going to also be about just kind of exploring. And these are just kind of some of the things that you can create with gel printing. And I think I even have, I have to remove my bottles because I'm using them. Things like coasters. These are all things that we've done on the channel. This was a piece that I did with patrons over on Patreon. And you've all seen this video, most likely. But these are fun different ways that you can actually utilize all those prints that you guys are probably storing somewhere like me in a bin because I have literally probably more than a thousand at this point because I have been gel printing for years. This is my first time doing a live on my channel where I'm actually printing. So bear with me. Tiffany is in my ear. She's going to, because I am not good at doing two things at once. So reading, commenting, and doing art is just way beyond my pay grade. <laughs> so today, Tiffany is going to um, take your questions and she is kind of in my ear or she'll jump on the live and just ask those questions. So if you have questions about gel printing or want to see something in particular, uh, make sure you chime in so that we kind of know that. All right, so I put a poll. If you haven't had a chance to answer it, please do. The poll I put in the chat is a little different than the one that I put on the main page. And what I'm curious is when you all see something really cool, because we're all guilty of this, we see this really, and I'm just going to start printing because FYI, these plates have been a little unloved recently. So I'm just going to kind of get started just to kind of get them you know, primed. And you can see I have older, um, you know, pay it forward textures and techniques on this. You can see I've got like clearly used some bubble wrap and I've got leftover stencil work, probably from when I was making Christmas cards is probably the last time I've used this particular plate. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of get going here while I'm talking. I've already forgotten what I said before. How terrible was that? That's because we're live taking some of my favorite paints, which are Amsterdam paints, and I have supply lists linked in the description below, um, or really in any sort of um, gel printing tutorial. And I have kind of like, I wish you could see at my entire setup here. So I have paints in front of me here. I have some uh, brayers that I have. You can see that I don't clean these uh, because I used to, 
I used to be very anal with it, but I was spending so much time cleaning my plates and my brayers, which these are a pain to clean, um, that I really wasn't having fun. And I found that I kind of put my gel printing supplies away. And I have so much fun when I print that I finally just decided, you know what, I'm going to stop cleaning everything. And I started printing more and more and more and going off the deep end with this. So I encourage you to kind of try that if you're finding that you're leaving your supplies a little to the side and not getting into it as much because they don't have to be perfectly clean every time. You can clean your plate kind of like what I'm doing now. And then I'm just gonna roll this over here with, and then just use that on other pieces. And what's really cool about it is when you leave stuff behind, I know I had a question that I asked myself that I'm still not answering. Tiffany, maybe you can remind me what that was. Um, when you leave stuff on your plate and you just kind of pay that forward, it really builds up amazing texture on prints. And those are those unique kind of grungy things that I love having on new pieces. So I'm gonna take some deli paper here and I'm just gonna drop it down. And I don't mind if it's wrinkled and it's not perfect, that's totally fine. I have it in two sizes and I just get this off Amazon. And I know that if you're in another country, I've had a lot of people ask me that over the years, what is deli paper? It's sandwich wrap paper. And I love it because it's nice and thin. It's really easy to collage with. I find that I get more use out of deli print uh, pieces than I do cardstock. Now, if I am going to specifically make cards, then you can see, look, it's pulling off all that previous dirt that I would have cleaned. And look at that, I've got interesting texture. Now, I'm not gonna use this print as a whole immediately, but you can even cut this down and you've got something really interesting for a card. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of building up a little bit of grunge on my plate. And this one's just, and these are things that we're gonna just build on. I don't have a plan, FYI. I told Tiffany, I don't have a plan because I wasn't, first off, I wasn't really sure what we were doing today. I wasn't sure which medium we were gonna use and it would have been too much to plan both last minute. But I thought that this would be kind of fun for you guys to see that you're not alone. When you sit down, you don't always have a plan. And that can be kind of cool. So ask me any questions here in the in the uh, chat. Oh, my gosh. I see Karen. I got Karen addicted in a live I did where I taught Catherine Pooler years ago. Gosh, that's been years by now. Um, how to gel print. And that was really a lot of fun. Uh, taking somebody who had never gel printed on day one and just experimenting. And that's really what I kind of consider gel printing to be just experimenting. So now that I'm adding brown down, and this is something that I like to do a lot, I've still even got more paint on here. So I'm gonna take another plate and just add a little bit here because I love adding brown and black, like Mars black or Payne's gray, and I'm gonna put that on off to the side. I'm gonna now take something that's gonna create some texture just so that I can uh, get something different and unique on here. And I'm going to start to just play a little bit and start adding down some stencils just to kind of pull. And when I add stencils and I pull up something different, I'm going to take like older prints that aren't really anything and just start to build a little bit of character here. I'm just going to pull some of this out and just kind of build up these prints a little pulling pattern at the same time. Because my goal here, and the reason I do this, is I just want to, and look at that, I love that. So let's take this even and add this to here. The goal here is to, oh that, yeah, that stencil was gorgeous too. Those are, that's from the Peacock series that you can get over at Joggles. Uh, that Elizabeth St. Hilaire has made. And I'm putting this bubble wrap onto my small plate off to the side too. I'm just trying to create a little bit of light here in the spaces. And I've got stencils all around me. I wish you could really see. <clears throat> 
you just add something else here and just kind of start to pull up some of this pattern. Love this. And you love Ingrid. More and more depth. Yeah. Thank you for jumping in here. It's weird. <laughs> You're all by myself, not talking to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dawn's asking, I came in late. Can you use parchment paper? I've never tried that. I don't see why you can't. You can use any paper that you want. The only thing, though, is parchment paper has a wax, a real waxy surface, way waxier than deli paper. Um, but try it. I would love to know in the comments if anybody's done that. And then you can also print on just about anything. Anything that will pull paint up, you can print on. Like I have a ton of boxes, for instance. I save like all my pasta boxes because a lot of times on the inside. And so like in the past, I would spend like truly like an hour or two cleaning all my stencils and everything afterwards. And it was not fun, I'll be very honest. And once I let go of that, <laughs> I started having a lot more fun. So now this is not enough texture on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually throw this down so that I can pull up as much, but I'm gonna do it quickly, which is not something you see me do very often. I should have done that with color underneath. So let's take, this was just me pulling like leftover color from prints before, um, actually on a side plate. So like this would be perfect in here. Oh yay, Laura's joined us too. How fun. So now you see I have really cool texture over something. Um, and I love prints like this because they add so much character and depth when you start to do collaging or art journaling or other things like that. All right. So I've kind of got some grunge built up here. But what I would like to do is actually pull some of this away. So I'm going to add, let's see here. Let's add a neutral since we did browns. And I never know what colors I'm going to gravitate towards. So that being said, I have like kind of like my more subdued colors around. And then I also have brights because I don't like to box myself in when I create. I think that it's really important. This is why I have this uh, titanium buff light in addition to white. I don't really know the direction I'm going. And if I box myself in, sometimes it paralyzes me. Um, I don't know if that ever happens to any of you. I'd love to know. And that's just not very much fun. So I just added just a little bit because my goal is not really to, I don't know, pull everything. I want to leave some of that brim there. So I'm just going to roll some off. And then once I have gotten rid of, and I use plates, by the way, to just kind of get rid. And that's why I'm, what I'm doing over here is just kind of removing stuff and just moving it to somewhere else. I always work with multiple plates at once, which I know seems weird if you're just getting started. But trust me, you'll have a much better experience having two plates. So if you're just getting started and you get just get like a big plate, get yourself like a five by seven. They're not very expensive. Because you'll have way more fun. And you can kind of see that pattern there. All right. So let's just go ahead and play here. I'm going to throw right, this out Ingrid. here again. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Let me ask one question. If anybody wants to see something specific, don't be afraid to ask. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Debbie is asking, can, can you link the video? Oh, sorry, not that one. It was, how do you store all of the used deli paper you just used to pull off colors? Mm, I have a video on that. <laughs> um, I'll, find it, I, I'll find it and link it. <laughs> yeah, I use, uh, it's the one that I did last, I want to say last March with Carrie. Um, yeah, I have a system that I use. I call it the ABC system. You can see I'm just sort kind of starting to build up. Whereas earlier, and I know some of you might have thought, oh my gosh, why would you even put anything on top? This is kind of one of those ugly duckling phases. And you have to trust me because the more you start to build, the cooler these prints become. 
And the more you layer and you build, you end up with stuff that is truly amazing that while you were doing it, you were like, I can't believe I just ruined that. But trust me, in the end, it ends up really amazing. Not always, but mostly, most times. So I can explain the ABC system in a nutshell, but it's a really cool um, video that actually showcases it visually, how I actually break down my prints, what I think is an A, what I think is a B, and what I think is a C. And then I have those in bins, and then I go to my C bin, and that's what I'm pulling, or my B bin. Because the A prints, those are the ones that are done um, in a nutshell. So, and I don't really mind so much these lines. There are other things that you can do. You know, you can always take your fingers. I take my fingers and use my fingers a lot. Um, I can also, I'm like looking around here. When this is a little bit more wet, you can also take like a paintbrush and you can see that, you know, maybe I need a little bit of transparent white is also a good thing to have in your stash. Just add a little teeny tiny dot there roll that out just to kind of get a little bit of moisture on there. Because you have to remember, think of this kind of like painting. When things are wet and things are dry, things move and things don't. So there we go. You can see you can kind of get rid of that harsh line and then still have that feel like it's very organic in there. So let's do the same thing over here so that that kind of feels a little bit more like it belongs there. And you can see that this is just building up. This was actually supposed to just be my work off the side plate, but clearly, apparently I'm turning it into art. <laughs> Not uncommon. <laughs> and see how I'm blending that in now? I did this really nicely in that one video where I created the Tuscan landscape, which is truly one of my favorite gel prints that I've ever made. Um, it was, it's a whole process of layering and layering and layering and layering. And when you really start to understand that and grasp that, I encourage you to watch it because then you'll start to understand you don't have to do the entire plate all at once to create something truly magical. And, um, it's just really a fun process. So you can see here how I kind of pulled a little bit away here. I would love to know in the comments why you guys think I did that. So I'm going to, this is going to be an educational thing. I can't not. Tiffany, I need you to chat. This is hard just to sit here by and talk to yourself. <laughs> All right. I have a couple questions. <laughs> Go for uh, it. Hold on. I have to move my mic closer so I can read. Can you use any cheap acrylic paint? That's a great question. <laughs> and I can tell that my voice changed, which means I have an opinion. So <laughs> a very, very, uh, very strong opinion here. There are all different levels of paint. When I first started gel printing, um, the kids, Michael bought me a six by six gel, Jelly Arts gel plate, which I love. I still have it to this day. It's an excellent shape. Um, the kids bought me one of those $15 sets off Amazon that had like 12 or 18. I'm sure, Tiffany, you've probably had something like that too. Um, I had the hardest time pulling prints. It was so frustrating because things, they don't stay open. And when I say open, how long they stay wet on the plate. So like right now I can feel that this is still a little tacky. Okay. This is a good quality paint. This is an excellent quality paint. Um, the Ranger Dina Wakely ones, those are good quality paints. I love those. Student grade, which is way cheaper than artist grade. And I'm kind of letting some of this dry. That's why I'm not printing right at this moment. Um, that's a great quality to use. When you start using things that are really, really cheap, I hate to say it, but you're going to get what you pay for. You're going to be frustrated. It's not going to work. Some parts are going to dry before others do. And in, in the end, it's just going to frustrate you and you're going to end up abandoning it and you've thrown money away. So you get what you pay for. Um, think about that. I have an opinion also when it comes to gel plates, and I've never said this publicly, really. <sighs> so I get asked a lot, Jelly Arts versus Gel Press, uh, Ranger, Speedball, 
things like that. I have not tried every single plate out there, but I have consistently used Jelly Arts and Gel Press for the last seven, eight years. It's been something like that. I use both. They're both good quality plates, but my personal experience in plates is over time uh, because, and, and I don't know this to be true, but my guess is because I don't clean them completely all the time, um, some stuff gets left behind. And Jelly Arts, I've never had a problem with ever. My plates, I have them from day one. They're a few dollars more, but probably because they're made in the United States versus Taiwan, which is where Jelly Press is made. But I've had several Jelly Press plates that have stopped working. So saving two, three, four dollars on a plate can cost you long term where you have to replace the entire plate. And when you start getting into bigger plates, that can be quite costly. So again, that's just my own personal experience. Um, I do still use both plates and I have lots of both, lots of them, um, but I've had to replace gel, gel press plates several times uh, versus my Jelly Arts plate. And the Jelly Arts plate too, they're slightly thicker um, and they have a really nice squish factor and I like that in pulling parts. So I can't believe I said that publicly, but I did. There we go. Uh, All right, quick. go for it. Um, the Catherine Puller, uh, someone was asking about the Catherine Puller where you taught her how to use a gel plate. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, is that a public video or where was that? No, it's not. Okay. It's a private video on Stamp Nation, which is her private community. But I, not even Karen, I know you're in the chat. And Lisa, hi, Lisa. Uh, Lisa's in the chat. Um, I have a feeling that, oh, wow, there's several Stamp Nation people are there, too. Circle Guru, love her, too. Very talented, very talented creators. <laughs> All sorts of talented creators in here. Um, I believe that, I'm not sure if it's even there anymore. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So, but that was a fun, that was a fun experience. So even though I have kind of uh, bright now going over the brown, I'm picking blues because I love the way blues look with brown. And so I'm going to not just take something that's lighter here. Nobody answered my question as to why I'm leaving, pulling all this stuff off. I'm curious what you guys think. I'm going to add some dark, some dark paint too. And you can see that you don't need an insane amount of paint. Um, I'm layering now, so the goal isn't really to um, necessarily have paint everywhere. So adding turquoise. I always tend to brayer out my lightest colors first. And since I have so much on here, I'm going to actually bring a little down here before going into this darker blue. And you always want to make sure that you're lifting your brayer at the same time because I'm working out this little I left that on there for a second so I just gotta kind of work that out because <clears throat> I don't want to have that that look there and add a little darkness up here and I think I'm going to leave this here let's go ahead and add a little bit of blue here the goal is not to have a ton of harsh lines or a lot of blue <clears throat> And I actually would like to just kind of blend these in a little bit more. We're moving every now that I'm coming back in, <clears throat> you can see it actually kind of pulls that paint up a little. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to actually lighten the color a little bit because the goal is to layer a different color there. Next, I want that to kind of dry though a little. I kind of like the, and I do this a lot too, and that's why I like doing this on the glass mat because it holds everything nice and tight. If you don't have a glass mat, you can use a larger piece of paper. You can see I've got some really cool um, pattern going there and some fingerprints now. Um, you can put paper underneath and then tape it to your surface, but it is a little bit of a frustrating experience, but you can do that. This is too big. This is, an, I want to say, a 9 by 12 plate. So, all right. All right, we have another question about brayers. Do mm -hmm. you have a brayer preference? How many, how many beaters? And, yeah, I don't know. And what size do you recommend for a beginner? Um, honestly, 
spend the money on a good brayer. Uh, I've had, gosh, I have so many of the more inexpensive, they're not within reach, but uh, the more inexpensive speed balls that are like $10, I want to say. I have them all on the supply list. <clears throat> but this speed ball where you can't really so easily take this in and out of here, this is but hands down my favorite, definitely my favorite brayer. Um, it comes in several sizes. <clears throat> this is, I want to say four inches maybe. One, two, three, four. Yes, four inches. And this is the smaller one. This is two inches. I would recommend both because sometimes you don't really want to cover that wide a distance. And just because you have a plate and you have all this space, I know you want to throw a bunch of paint down, <laughs> but you don't have to. So let's let's take this blue over here. We've got a lot going on here. Let's let's add a little yellow here. Now these are going to probably blend, and even though well, let's see. It depends on it whether or not it's dry. If it's wet, it'll blend to green. A little tiny bit. Some is staying, and it depends also on how translucent they are, the paints, because uh, you can have opaque paints and translucent paints. Translucent ones will allow that other color to shine through. But you can see how I'm able to control much better where I'm going then if I were to take this big one, my natural instinct is to just do this. And then all of a sudden I have yellow everywhere. And that's not really where um, I wanted to go in that moment. So I also have a lot of the little ranger, ranger guys. And I know I have a lot of brayers, but I teach live classes too. So I have a lot of um, different supplies. I started off with just one. <laughs> Then I added this because this one was cheaper. I wish I had added this. Um, and I started with the other, the other more inexpensive brayer that I had had for years. These two are definitely hands down. After doing it over and over again, my favorite. So now that we have those, I want to add a little bit of um, Deep Magenta. Deep Magenta by Abstract. <clears throat> definitely one of my favorites another and I am not really a pink person but this is also one of my favorites uh this one right here quinacridone magenta by liquitex this is just one of, these are just some of the most beautiful hues and they're really really beautiful when they mix with other colors and whenever you have something that really stands out like that like um, some of the like turquoise ones and in, not just every yellow is is a great yellow uh, let me just pull mine out here off to the side i've got it here somewhere maybe maybe not i'll find it oh here it is um this is really great like cadmium yellow and this is cadmium yellow hue by abstract not every yellow like this one's really really super bright uh, will blend as nicely. So it's important um, to kind of try different things. I started off a lot with um, the Soho brand, which is uh, the student grade by Jerry's Artorama. And I also, I also used a lot of the Dina Wakely little guys that were inexpensive. But when you start to really look at expanding into more and more paints, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck. Sorry, Ranger, I love Ranger, but those little tiny bottles only go so far. And this is actually on sale way cheaper than those little tiny bottles. And look at how much more I'm gonna get than a bottle that's this tiny big and just slightly around. So look at some student grade paints for sure and, ex and, and explore your options. Look at art stores. A lot of times art stores have supplies when you start to really look at it, actually cheaper than places like Michael's, which is very, very expensive, um, and other stores like that. Okay, so let's add some of this too. So this is Deep Magenta. And want that to dry. And I love it when it blends with turquoise because it turns into this really, really pretty purple, uh, which is really nice. Um, and I think I'm going to add a little bit here. And when I start, because I already have some pattern underneath, I don't like to get too crazy when I'm working with an open style like this. Um, when I 
keep a stencil down and I work in the pockets, that's when I start to layer a lot of different stencils. And now I'm going to let that dry, except I want to add a little tiny bit more texture. And to add texture, I'm going to grab some fun little things that you all have access to. So if you're brand new and you're like, I can't get all those stencils, it's too much money. Yeah, they are. Stencils are expensive. Took me a couple of years to uh, uh, just add to my stash. But you have a lot of really great stencils all around you and you have no idea. This is, anybody know what this is? <laughs> I'm not even gonna show you. I'm gonna make you guys guess <laughs> in the comments. All right, whoever whoever answers this first, I will personally send a stash of leftover prints to. How's that? I'll leave you guys to answer that. I'm not even gonna show you. This is also one of my favorites. <laughs> Great guesses, I haven't seen it yet though. It's still up for grabs. <laughs> It's something that every single one of you have in the kitchen. Let's put it that way. Oh, garlic bulb holder right there. Excellent job, Allison. I love that. Yes, uh, garlic. You all get garlic. And chances are a lot of you get those like three packs or 12 packs or whatever. This makes one of the best stencils. And if you pop that down and you just take, this is why I like some of these smaller guys. You just come in here and it'll leave the most intricate little kind of like netting on there. And those little tiny bits sometimes are just, they're like gold on a project. And don't worry, and you can see it's starting to pull up because this is starting to dry. Oh, this is where I really start love building texture. Oh, just pulling up that real, real faint pattern and taking up some of that paint with it. I love that look. I'm starting to get really excited. Well, it's been a while. <laughs> I'm glad you guys picked this. <laughs> I've been just doing alcohol inks every single day. All right. So I can see that's still a little wet. Let's work on this one. All right. I need to look and see what we got going on here. I have a, I have a quick question. Cool. From Lisa. She says, I notice you're not worried about it drying out while you talk. Does this oh. paint stay wet for a long time? Um, no, it depends. It depends on how heavy a layer you actually choose. So you guys can kind of see some of the stuff that we're building up here. Um, lots of really fun layers. Um, if you go really light, like you can see through the layer, like I actually was using this as you saw the be at first I was adding the primary color here and then adding the leftover here. Then I kind of flip flopped because I saw what was going on here. And uh, then I kind of switched. I started adding color here and adding this, using this plate as kind of like a cast off, cast off plate, uh, rolling all the excess. No, I have rolled very, very little, by the way, onto scrap because why put my paint there? Why not create two projects out of one? Um, if you add a ton, as you'll see, because I think what I'm going to do now is uh, pull, take a pull. And even though I wish I, I really wish I had used black instead of brown, but it is what it is. Um, I need this to be completely dry. And I can see right here, let's see if I can show you guys. Can you see how this middle right here is a little shiny? Um, and that means that it's still a little wet, whereas all these other parts feel very opaque. So if I were to touch this, I guess we'll just have to do it. Oh, it's somewhat dry. It looked really wet. So, okay, that's good. It's just a little tacky. I'm now going to add white. So this is a not transparent. I'm gonna actually add white, white, because I want any spaces like these that I created with um, another one of my favorite tools. Uh, just an egg carton. I want the white to pop through for contrast. So you can see I'm adding quite a bit compared to before. So I'm going to roll this out and see how you have all those ripples. That is a sign that you, and this is really important for anybody who's brand new. That's a sign that you have too much paint. And I did that on purpose just to show you guys. So now what I have to do is I've got to actually pull this paint off because if I don't, I'm going to get those ripples in my print. 
and you can see how much paint this is here. So I guess we'll just pull this one. We'll just move transfer things over here. This wasn't the plan, but we're doing it now. Um, and this isn't going to be enough to pull that. What I'm doing is I'm adding a wet layer to all the dry layers. So what's going to happen is now that I've pulled enough up, because you can see I kind of am starting to see things. I don't want to go too far. I'm going to end up adding more to here. I'm going to pull this onto a deli print because it's my paper of choice, quite honestly. Now I need it to dry. Okay, so the wet layer and the dry layers are going to uh, interact. This is drying. So when it's drying, if, if it were to completely dry, to fully answer your question, and then I added paper, I wouldn't be able to take a pull. So what's happening here right now underneath the deli paper or cardstock or whatever you're adding to it is the layers are bonding together. So right now I have my hand on top of here and you'll test this out when you're doing this yourself. Completely cool. Okay, it's cool to the touch. As it starts to dry, this will warm up. So I encourage you to do this experiment where you have something that's really wet, add your hand on here and then let it sit. You'll see a lot of people, they do pulls immediately all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just one style of printing. I have a tendency to layer one layer after another to build texture using stencils, using fun things like this. Um, and this is still a little wet. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pull this too. Um, and in order to do that, you need each layer to dry in between. Because if you don't, and those layers are wet, then um, you're just going to get a muddy mess because just like watercolor, things are going to bleed together. So thinking of like if you added yellow and green on top of each other and the yellow wasn't quite or the green wasn't quite dry and you added the yellow, um, then you're going to get blue right now. Yellow and blue together will make green. Yellow and green are just going to make brighter green. Does that make sense? Did I answer that? Tiffany. Yes. So you need to, uh, <laughs> I was waiting. I don't, so, okay. So, um, you can chime in and interrupt me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't give me permission. No, I'm just kidding. I give you full um, on permission. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pretty, I mean, we've done this before mm -hmm. together. Um, I don't think on stream, but like in the, you know, together crafting, but, um, and I've mm -hmm. watched you, um, do this. So, to get the layers of like all the texture and stuff, you need to let the the layer dry and then add another layer on top, right? Is that you what need I'm... to add another wet layer. So like right wet now, layer, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so right now, and it's going to take a little bit for this to actually dry. So I'm going to end up pulling a plate on top, and we're continuing to work just because we're live. Um, this is also, by the way, why I work with two plates because to then have to sit here and wait. It's frustrating. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I did, that, did I answer that? Yes. Uh, okay. And I have another question. Uh, do you need the paint to dry a little before you pull, or is it better to pull while it's no. mostly wet? And I think you it's answered that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely want to add it while it's wet because here's the thing. Okay. So I'm doing now. Let's let's here. Let's actually do this in real time. So I've got a bunch of grunge on here, which is not going to be all that pretty. So hang on one second. Let me. OK, so I've got a bunch of color underneath and some really cool pattern that I had paid for. You can see on the very first layer underneath that I had added like this um, uh, titanium buff light, which I didn't pull. I didn't have enough. So it's not really doing anything exciting for me. So let's add a little tiny bit more of this. So this is completely dry right now. There's nothing going on. I can't pull this off. If I were to add a piece of um, deli paper to it right here, nothing's going to come up. It's just not going to happen because it's two dry surfaces. Okay. So if I were to add a little bit more here, just a little bit. Okay. And I probably still have a little bit of white on this, but let's just add this here. You can see that because I added so little, it's not really all that wet. It's just kind of wet. So the parts, I'm going to add now a piece of dry paper to it, the deli paper. 
the parts that are wet or that are dried are going to stay behind. You can see how fast that happened. Very, very little actually pulled. That's how fast it dried because I added such a light layer. Now, this actually is to my benefit because remember, I wasn't really liking what was going on. So I want to kind of pull up a little bit more. So let's do that again. And I'm going to now be a little bit more intentional with where it's going. Because I don't want to pull everything up here because there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. But I'd like to pull up some of these areas. So let's just now just kind of tap just a few areas. And you can see how I'm starting. Where I tapped is where it came up because it was wet. So the wet bonded with the dry paper enough that I could actually lift some stuff up. This is how you're able to get like specific grunge on pieces. You've seen me do that before in pieces. Um, the ones where that one video where I, maybe you can link this one, Tiffany. Uh, the one video where I use my mom's um, prints. I do, I have a really good example of me doing this intentionally in that video. Uh, it's from December of 2020. You can see now that I've created some light. So I have something really fun going on, some grunge, and that's gonna allow other stuff to shine through. So to get back to the bigger question here, this is dry, okay? Just like paper. The white that I added, totally wet, okay? With a dry piece underneath, almost like a sandwich. What the wet does over time, as it dries in between, I'm able to finally pull all of these together. Now this is still drying because there was so much white that I added because I was giving an example of what was too much. So I still need to let this sit. So let's keep working on this. How was that? Did I answer it, Tiffany? Help me out. Yes, yes, sorry. I was looking for the, <laughs> for the video. Um, I wanted to ask, do you teach classes? Do you like online classes obviously or anything like that? That's a great question. Um, I'm actually going to teach a free class, believe it or not, <laughs> um, uh, on gel printing, uh, something that's really specific. And it is on going to I'm going to work with creating those layers that I do through pockets. And it's kind of like a style that I found on my that I've has kind of evolved over the years. So I'm going to do that for free on Zoom. It is going to be open to everybody. Um, so I do have a mailing list, um, and that is where you'll get information on that. Um, so I don't know. Do you have that? Link? I don't know if you have that link. Do you? I'll put it in the description of this live. Uh, yeah, I couldn't find afterwards. it. I couldn't find yeah. it anywhere. So I was I'll, trying to search, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that afterward. Um, and then if you guys are interested, I am more than happy to build classes around that because there's so much you can do with gel plates. I mean, literally, and this goes back to the poll that I posted in the beginning. And I'm just, I'm just like experimenting here. I don't have a plan, by the way. This is just me playing, just creating textures, taking things that hold onions, okay? And just creating, creating textures. Notice I, I used a black, but I just want to keep it to the side, okay? Because you want to limit when you're doing something really dark, because otherwise it'll overtake everything else. Because <clears throat> um, I'm just really, I was really just kind of looking to get some grunge there. Okay, that's kind of cool. These kind of pieces, I know it looks like nothing, but they end up turning out to be really cool usually. But you got to pull some of that stuff away. All right. I think this has dried enough. I hope. Nervous. I wish I had used black on the base layer. This is always the most satisfying part. Now, when you have stuff that's staying behind, it's because it hasn't dried. Okay. So what's happening is there's friction between uh, the wet and the dry. And whichever one is stronger, the plate with the paint, if it's too wet and I'm pulling the dry piece, um, that's going to be left behind. And you can tear. That's how when you tear your paper, if your paper, because when you add wet to something dry, you're weakening it, right? So when it tears, it just means that the plate has won out over the paper. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm really digging this. 
it's kind of interesting that it's brown. I wish it was black. It would have been really, really, really cool had I used black, but I didn't. Ooh, ah, you needed some sound effects. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Amazing. You. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Now to me, this is not done. <laughs> this is, this is like step 5.2. <laughs> Now you can see there's that garlic texture. See how when we put the brayer over it, it kind of pulled the paint out behind it and smashed that texture into it. So it's got this super, super fine, look, detailed look in there with this really beautiful peacock kind of mask that we had underneath there. I love that. I can see the, um, I don't remember if it was deli, Deli paper, not deli paper, if it was bubble wrap. I think I don't think it was. I think it was the egg carton that's in there. Um, there's a lot of really cool things. Now, I don't want to do this just here because I want to keep printing. But um, for me to take this to another level before I turn it into something else, now I would take stencils and I would probably layer on top or you can continue to create instant, really cool textures and grunge like this. Um, and then be very specific as to where you're putting it on your print um, so that you can just continue to build that up more and more, even add splatter circles. And you can see here, this is a perfect example. I just happen to have this next to me. So lucky where I had a leaf print and then I did just that. I created texture with just black on a gel print and then I pulled it on top of a finished print. And then I did the same even with just circle rounds um, from like things like this, bottle caps um, also. And then I added uh, actual splatter because everything's better with splatter, right? And then I even embossed a little on the sides before turning this into a coaster. There's a video on that too. All right. Another question. Uh, sure. Oh, it, the, uh, okay. I just bought a trio set of triangle, square, and circle petite plates. What are some ideas to use those? Mm. That's a good question. I got one right here. There are lots of things that you can do. They're great for stamping onto. Um, actually, you can use these really. I would leave leave it on the acetate if you want to do this or put it onto like a stronger, you can put it onto a stamping block too. And then you can stamp with it. You can do whatever texture it is there. Um, try using it with different mediums too. Try it with alcohol inks, try it with, you know, just exp ex explore different things as well. I use them mostly for little cast off plates like this. So as you see me using like um, other, other plates just to create grunge or texture, especially when I start to use things like this. I always use, I like put my paint here first and then I utilize it this way. That's just something that I personally do. I have another video that I'll link later um, where I actually did that with a smaller plate like this, where I used it as my extra plate. But what happened here spawned an idea that actually turned out way cooler than what I was actually working on on the plates. <laughs> and that is the magic to me of these little guys. You can also just work in a smaller form. Sometimes working in a smaller form though, I'll be very honest, um, can be limiting because you're trying to do an awful lot in a small space. And I feel like when you actually um, go bigger, you have a little bit more freedom, if I can be quite honest. Uh, something else you can do is you can also utilize this to pull from here. I mean, don't be afraid to try that. Um, feel free to chime in here, Tiffany, if you have any ideas. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Using Michelle, ink pens? Yeah, uh, that's... I'm Because honestly, I'm a little intimidated using awesome. uh, paints. <laughs> but when we had done it together, I got excited. But I, I still would... I need to binge watch your videos again. <laughs> and I am definitely interested. Everybody's uh, excited about that Zoom. Uh, do you have an idea of when it's going to be or anything like that? Well, 
You know, I I have been talking about it for a year, and then I got a I I was gonna do I I put a video out and I put the question out, and then I got a full time job literally like three weeks later, <laughs> because full disclosure, we own a travel agency, and COVID was not the best. We lost our business overnight, so um, I needed to work, <laughs> and um, yeah, so. Uh, that's been one of my hiccups, but I'm kind of in a place now where I'm ready. So I, I guess we just need to pick a date, right? Yep. Yep. I guess, why don't we just say, let's do this. Cause I've been thinking about it for a long time. So why don't we just say somewhere between the next uh, month to two months that I will go ahead and, and do that live yep. over on zoom. Perfect. Cause that'll be a lot of fun. Cause I have to get this, the specifics nailed down there. Um, but I'm excited because I know what I'm teaching. So uh, I think yes, you guys will the all enjoy it. And, and one of the things, and the reason that I'm not going to do it over here and do it there is because it gives you an opportunity to show me what you're coming up against. Because you can have a camera just like me here, and then I can physically see what maybe your hiccups are and help you adjust. Just like Tiffany and I did when we did a live on alcohol inks. She was able to see what I was actually doing. And as I was coming up with frustrations or things that questions I had, I was able to show her. Um, and there's such value in that. So you can see here the ends kind of dried. I don't know. This might be, this might not be ready to pull, but I'm going to pull it anyway. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's not quite ready. Sorry, I get impatient. I don't know about you. You guys get impatient with your pulls too? It's like you want to pull things. I do clean my plates when I start to get a little too much of a paper uh, paint scab on the sides, you know, layer after layer, and they start to impede the pulls. Then I will come in with um, a high alcohol, uh, like, um, what's this called? Hand sanitizer. And that's a great way to actually clean your plates and your uh, brayers, by the way. So this is kind of fun. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is a cool one. Oh, love that. So it's got really subtle texture in here. That's really nice. This is, again, this I would classify as a B print. Um, same thing with the other one. I would classify as both of these as bees. They're like on their way to something, but they're not quite there. So I would probably continue to print over these. By the way, like I even classify stuff like this as bee prints for me. Although this could probably, this would probably make a really nice card. Just nice sentiment on it, right? Okay. Let's do... I'm going to put this to the side. Let's do something bright and cheery. I'm totally open if you guys have something specific that you want to see. I think I'm just going to take some pulls really quick. See what I can take up from here. By the way, I did not start off with a 9x12 plate. I've been printing for years, and I just got this in the last year. But it has very quickly become my favorite, and there's a very specific reason why. Because I, I make a ton of cards. If you put this on the print with these, you see you have all that white space. So laying down, this, by the way, is the best way to make your own colored cardstock that's perfectly colored. I, and I'm not trying to get a full print. I'm trying to get like partials here. Um, this is the best way to do that. Create your own, especially when you've got those nice, bright, like lemony yellow, like this one. Nice light here, light background. So you, 
you're using cardstock, what weight cardstock and what type would you recommend? Oh, great question. Um, this is actually exact, Nina exact paper. It's not expensive. It is, I get it like off Amazon or like at Walmart for 12 to $14 for an entire ream of 250 sheets. Uh, it's not something I would use as card bases, but it's great for layering on cards, quite honestly. Um, because it's cost effective and it's really bright white, really bright white. So with this now, I'm going to just create, let's use a different kind of, this is a fun, yeah, this is a fun one. And this will just kind of lay in from edge to edge. So this won't go kind of off, but then at the same time, my paper doesn't fit to the edge either. So let me shift this over just a little bit so that you guys can see the full plate. Right. I have another quick question. Uh, go ahead. Have you ever used pattern paper to use to pull your gel, like your gel print? Oh, wow. No, I haven't. That's a great question. Um, I would think that if you have a really cool design, especially like light colors, and then you're using something that provides contrast, that would be really interesting. Because you have to remember, are you, now if you're going to use it with stencils, Oops, I pushed too hard. If you're going to use it with stencils, yeah, that's right. If you're going to use it with stencils, then um, you're not going to have a pattern and you're just pulling like paint on top of it. So it's going to layer on top so you won't see the pattern paper. But if you, you, if you didn't use a stencil, if you used a stencil though, then you would have that stencil pattern, which would be really cool. Um, or are you thinking just because you're probably like me and I have probably a thousand sheets of pattern paper. I don't know, Tiffany, how many do you have sitting there collecting dust? Too, too many. And I was thinking when, when that question came up, uh, those, those uh, papers that are just a little bit, have a little bit of texture or something going on, but mostly just colored, that would be kind of cool to do prints with because those are just sitting there for me. I don't really use those often. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be kind of interesting to add another something to it and actually use the use the pattern paper. Um, yeah. But uh, Heidi's asking, since you are using yellow, can you add blue and make something for Ukraine for a card? I can. Yes. Um, it's funny because I think that's why I was just pulled. Because uh, like I said, I actually did not have a plan for today. <laughs> I just put colors around and uh, I seem to have used quite a bit of yellow and blue. I think it's just, I guess it's just really on everybody's mind right now. Um, are you asking me to specifically make do that right now? Or are you just saying, is that a question question? No, I think she's asking if you could do, if you could do it now. Okay. Um, I will be happy. Yeah, I can hundred percent pull do polls. Um, making the card though is going to take some time. So I'll probably do that off screen, but, um, yeah, absolutely. So let's, I'm adding different shades of yellow just to note here. I put the stencil down. I put it onto a dry layer because when I took these polls initially, uh, they're light, and that was why I did that. So you can kind of see the contrast of yellow on yellow. It's nice and subtle. And that's just like that little something then that sits in the background. All right. Will you post the card maybe on Instagram since you've been using Instagram a lot more lately? Definitely. Or on your 100%. community tab, if yep. you know. Yep. So be sure yep. to keep an eye out in the next week or two. Okay. So let me let this dry just a few more seconds or a little bit more complete. Let's see if I can pull the rest of this up. The one, the one kind of uh, difficulty, I don't know if you guys have had that experience with stuff that I'm reaching back for a project, a particular project. Um, 
which now that I'm reaching for it, I'll never be able to find it. Uh, blue and blue and yellow mix, unfortunately, um, and turn green. <laughs> So that presents a little tiny bit of a challenge. Sometimes you need to make sure that everything is totally, totally dry. So that you can add something through it. Um, let's take some blues. Let's do some blues. Otherwise they will blend and turn into green. And I don't have the exact blue. So I'm going to mix some blues. Let's see if we can't get a better blend here. I also want to make sure that my yellow is not wet on my on my brayer because otherwise no, that's better. I need a little tiny bit more. So Don's asking if you add purple to yellow, would it make mud if the layers are completely dry? So layering a different color on top. Yeah, hang on, Tiffany. I need to, oh, I'm yeah. having difficulty hearing you. Okay. My computer brought your volume way down. Say that one more time for me. Uh huh. If you add purple to yellow, would it make mud if the layers are completely dry? Um, I think a lot of that's going to depend on how transparent they are. If they're both dry, um, you can, that's, what's really nice about gel printing is you can layer color on color if it's completely dry. Um, but if it's transparent, you're going to see it through there. So a lot of, there are some companies, let me see if I have one somewhere here. Some companies that actually show you on the front whether or not uh, it's opaque or transparent. Um, you can actually just kind of swatch your colors out too when you get them. Um, so like I said, if they're opaque, then they should be able to, you should be able to layer a dry layer on a dry layer. But if it's, yeah, that's not really the right blue. I don't know if I have the right blue. And we'll just have to layer blue in general. Does that make sense? Yes. To okay. me it does. Okay. <laughs> Let us know if that made sense. <laughs> if we answered that. It's a little better. This paint is a little on the old side. So it's kind of... I don't know. How would you describe that, Tiffany? Not the smoothest? Maybe a little tacky? Tacky, maybe? Is that right? Grid, gritty? Gritty kind gritty. of a little? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens. Paint gets old. Unfortunately, we all get old, right? So I'm trying to uh, just kind of put this in the corner. I don't know where my, I have uh, that one little tool by Jelly Gel, Arts. They came up with a really cool tool to uh, make sure that you always have the same, um, like when you're layering, because it's, it's frustrating when you have all this like white space and then you're doing a specific pattern, especially if you have like layering stencils or anything like that. They have a great tool that you just kind of put in the corner and uh, it works kind of like a uh, stamp -a jig or like the misty corners, that kind of stuff. That's a little better. It's a nicer blue. Okay. Now we're talking. So Tiffany, what are the, some of the things that you've done with your gel plate lately? Uh, lately, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I've looked, I actually looked at them the other day. Um, oh. <laughs> how many, oh, how many eight. other people, how many other people, I'm going to let you answer in a second. How many other people have left their gel plates in a drawer lately? Okay, go ahead. What were you saying about alcohol? Inks? No, I'm just. I've just been obsessed with alcohol inks and then of course other things, you know, just, but now I'm really excited. I want to, I wish I would have gotten on here with you to do this now because I'm like really excited <laughs> to, to play now. I love that. 
yeah. I wish you would have too. I'm looking at some. Oh, let's do this. This is a fun. I love this stencil. This is one of my favorite stencils. Um, I think I'm going to put a little bit more paint down and then take a pull. So, maybe what we can do is we can create like some cool yellow prints and some cool blue prints and then just like do paper piece them together. Although I am going to try and do blue over this. I do think it's going to create some green though. So I love the stencil. Love, love, love the stencil. It's a joggle stencil. So have you heard about this? The polling challenge over on Instagram. Danielle, Danielle's talking about it. She says, I just mm -mm. pulled mine out this month. Thanks to thanks to the March poll. Uh, sorry. I just pulled <laughs> mine out this month. Thanks to the March printing challenge over on mm. Instagram. The printing chat. Well, there's a jelly arts has a gel printing challenge every March. Um, and so they have an art prompt every single day. I encourage you. It's a great way to just kind of get back into, into the space and look at that different blues, three different blues. And something subtle like this is awesome on a card um, because it's that little something that you can use. Um, and I'm going to see what I can pull up on top of our print here. Okay. Because it's drying every second it's drying and I'm trying to pull the um, positive image out from the stencil. The negative image is the actual stencil. The positive image is the part that you're pulling out, the stencil pattern. So now the reason I'm pushing so hard also is because I'm trying to go through the stencil to let the dry paper connect with what is underneath and it had mostly dried. It didn't take very much. So well, that's unfortunate. So while that is drying, Let's, you know what? I don't know, Tiffany, should I put yellow? Should I risk it? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We try it again, right? Yeah, I think, I think try it. See what happens. Yeah, I think so too. I think sometimes that's just kind of what we have to do when we're creating is, is, instead of like second, second guessing ourselves and holding ourselves back from maybe possibly creating something amazing, just try it out. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, it doesn't. And you could always, even if it doesn't turn out, you could always use die cut it or collage with it, or, you know, there's always something to do with something, uh, print or whatever. Um, uh, That's turning green. Oh. The reason it's turning green though, is because I didn't make sure that my, um, brayer was dry quite honestly i didn't roll it off and that was a mistake so you can see you know it is what it is it's fine let's pull as much of that off as we can here yeah that was my fault still pretty though <laughs> still pretty so let's go ahead and just pull that off. Oh, good Lord. That is gorgeous. That's beautiful. Yeah, that is really pretty. <laughs> that is really pretty. Um, not a bad mistake. No, I wish I could show you my desk because now I have like prints everywhere. And I would love to know in the chat who of you, when you start printing, have just stuff everywhere. I have stuff everywhere right now. So this is fully dry. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna add blue to this. We're gonna try this in reverse. See how this goes. Make sure you clean your brayer. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Who said that? You or somebody yeah. in the chat? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Thank you. I'm mean, actually on this one, I'm gonna actually take a take a painting towel or whatever these shop rag shop all right <laughs> i 
got to say, it's not so easy to answer questions and print. <laughs> I'm not used to doing that. <laughs> Which is funny because I don't know about you, Tiffany, but when you teach, when I teach, uh, the stuff I make in class, I show every everybody usually. But if as you continue to create, as other people are asking you questions, it's never really like my best work because <laughs> I mean, focus is split. Same yeah, that's you? what happened. Yeah, that's what happened when we were doing the alcohol inks. I was. Yeah. I was focused on trying to help you and yeah yeah that's amazing that stencil where is that stencil from uh joggles joggles this joggles has some amazing uh, stencils they really do i want to say this might be there it'll be it'll definitely be on my supply list for sure that'll be linked in the description um or you might have linked it already i'm not sure yeah i think i got the right supply list yeah yeah oh that's kind of cool i like that now, okay, here's something that's really important that I want you all to recognize. We've got some really amazing color here. Now, if you start laying color and color and color, yeah, it looks cool. But when you're really looking at it, what really, truly makes prints pop is contrast. And a great way to get contrast is to add neutrals in. Okay, so don't be afraid to use Mars Black. Don't be afraid to use, you know, white. Uh, don't be afraid to use a deep brown. And I really love Van Dyke brown um, is usually one. I used a brown earlier. That's not, I'm realizing now it wasn't the brown that I usually reach for. I think that's why I was struggling with the color. This is the brown that I usually reach for. And by the way, just because it's called Van Dyke brown in Amsterdam doesn't mean that it's going to be the same in abstract. Doesn't mean it's going to be the same in Soho. Doesn't mean it's going to be the same everywhere else. Unfortunately, the same quinacridone magenta and lemon yellow is going to vary from brand to brand. So I encourage you to experiment. When you start to find a color that you love, try it from different brands because you might find one even better. So, all right. This is... You can see that I am letting this dry now because we're going to add... I'm gonna have somebody else. Yes. I'll send another package of of prints to the first person who answers that. What what color am I adding next and why? You are never late to the party, Jerry, by the way. I'm pretty sure I know this answer, but I'm not gonna answer it. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't somebody I don't see in the chat responding. <laughs> Yeah. So you guys tell me. I just grabbed it. I had to find it because even though it's always right in front of me, I can't see it. I think this is nice. Nicely done. Yes, you are right, Karen <laughs> and Allison. We're going to add white. I think this is, I'm going to let that one dry for a few more minutes. Okay. And same, same thing goes. I don't want to just add something wet because then it's going to become pale blue versus white. And that doesn't really help me uh, because then it's just not, it kind of creates a little bit of mud. Um, not the end of the world, but it could have been better. So, so we're making a car. I'm really tempted to use a del deli paper on this versus cardstock and just collage. Now you can see I added too much white. So I need this. This is just going to get white whether it likes it or not. So I can always add another layer. Yeah, that was definitely too much paint. And that's just something that you will learn by experience if you're unclear as to how much is enough. When you do it and it's too wet, I'm trying to think of which video it is that I actually did that in. There was a video that I did recently um, where I actually did too much paint so that you can see it and you get those ripples. You'll just know next time what that looks like. So pay attention when you do that. I'm gonna use cardstock, I think. I'm actually excited to make this card. It'll be good. 
All right. And this will most definitely get my um, one of my Tim Holtz sayings. I love those. What are, what's that thing called, Tiffany? Those books that you and I use all the time? Small talk. Oh yeah, the little small talk sticker books. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, those are love amazing. those. Ooh, this is really cute. Okay, so this happens all the time. I literally just had it in my hands. Just add a little tiny bit more light to this. And yeah, wow, that dried fast. More white because it's a big plate. This one we'll put on too. Has anybody, I'm curious, has anybody tried making the coasters after I posted that coaster video? That was truly one of the coolest things I've ever made, FYI. I say, I say it a lot. <laughs> and even if you don't use gel prints, you can use anything on those. I'm actually really excited to try it with some alcohol ink pieces that I have. Um, another thing that I would love for you guys to consider is we all have tons of paper scraps. Make coasters out of all those paper scraps. Make some fun little patterns. Ooh, this is great. This is really wet. Now this is wet too. It's not that wet. We'll get there. All right. So now that we're waiting, let's go back to our friend here. That's got a lot of kind of grimy stuff going on here. So I need to pull some of this up because it's a little too much. I love this that's going on here with the black. Oh, you know what I haven't used is probably my most used stencil. This one. To all you stencil makers out there, I need more word stencils <laughs> that have cool fonts. <laughs> this one is done by Carolyn Doobie over at Stencil Girl. Um, I have this linked because, as you can see, it is very well loved. I love this stencil. Um, yeah, so let's pull some of this. Let's start using Quinacridone Magenta, one of my favorites. When I first got started in making prints, I just sat here and just did print after print after print after print. I didn't really do any layers. I did pulls immediately, and I was left with a ton of prints that I didn't know what to do with. So I encourage you to layer a little, experiment, have some fun, um, try new things, because uh, it's very it's very easy to just take immediate pulls, but the more you start to use all the supplies that you all have, a lot of you have stencils, you have so many things that you can use. Raid your pantry, raid your kitchen. What makes texture? Raid your husband or partner. Maybe it's your stash in the garage. I'm the handy one in the house. I'm the one that has the power drill and all those other things. Raid your things in the garage. What can you find? Drywall tape is one of my all time favorite things to use. I just can't see how to find it for some reason. Um, Michael tries to throw away all my bubble wrap. That's like a very touchy subject in the house. I don't know about you, Tiffany. <laughs> yes. Uh, I can't remember if it was one of my kids or if it was my husband, actually. Do you really need all this bubble wrap? Yes. Oh, yeah. Back away. <laughs> it's actually pulling, it's actually pulling little pieces of paint off of the bubble wrap. That's funny. It's probably time to go for another one. <laughs> and you know, when I'm watching you, it's funny because uh -huh. I'm watching you do like little sec, like pull little sections mm. or like do the stencil in little sections. And I have like, cause I do that with like yesterday I did a live with the, when I did the, the card and I was stamping yeah. little sections. That's and I'm right. Like you thinking, were. I'm like, why don't I apply the same stuff to this? Because I would just pull the whole thing. You know what I mean? Is, is that making yeah. sense? Yeah. Yes, it Instead is. Instead of doing little sections. Yeah. And I do specifically that with, um, with words like I'm doing right now. I don't do the entire thing. And just one thing to note, you have to flip it around so the words are upside down. Otherwise, because when you're printing, you're printing in reverse. 
Um, and you need, you need like good amount of paint in order to get that. So the more I roll this on the off piece, the less paint there is, because I've already transferred some to here and moved it through there, which it's on, as you can see, this one is heavily loved. So with this one, you may need, in order to see that text, you're going to need a little bit more paint. And I'm, I'm notice I don't use like a crazy amount, but enough that there's actual so that I can actually see what's going on here. And just to note too, if I am adding this through the stencil and there's a layer of paint underneath that, the wording is going to be behind that. So you're probably not going to see it. Um, and that's just something that happens as you layer. So you can see here, not a lot. It looked like I did a lot, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I thought there was going to be way more on there. But so be kind of random but be intentional as well when you're layering right so like that, right now yeah. i know that there's nothing there so that's why i'm trying to add some and i'm going to go to a bigger space and even though that's kind of wet there i'm just gonna i'm kind of holding the plate up so that and i'm going to take this off this here and i'm going to now because i've kind of pulled a lot off i'm gonna where is that i can see it through here i'm gonna now push this in and this is how you get that really cool then print on this plate right which is going to be backwards but that's okay that's all right this is about adding little bits and pieces and see now i have that where you'll see it because it's in that empty spot same thing here it was very intentional um yeah this is cool and you could actually kiss these together but you're not going to get as clean a result because i have a lot of grunge so let's uh Let's just continue to build on this here and kind of fun. I just like building and experimenting and playing. And that's, if that's the, if that's what you take from today, that makes me ecstatic. Um, yeah, I was very tempted to actually just do this directly onto my print. I wish I had, because this is one of my favorite things is the leftover texture that's on the brayer. Tiffany does this a lot too in her mixed media with white. I mean, that would have been just so beautiful. And this too, by the way, would make a great card. Take some of your dies, cut out like a Christmas tree, have this behind and have that be in the negative space. And that's just such a cool little thing. These sometimes turn out to be some of the coolest beginnings of something magical. All right, so this, because there's not a lot here, I can go ahead and pull this up and I'm leaving, I was hoping to leave some texture behind. But look at that grunge. And it doesn't look like anything, but when you are actually collaging and doing things and you tear up these little bits and pieces, these are the pieces that create magic on say, like a die cut or in the background. These are gel plates, by the way. Um, I do that in this piece. This is leftover garbage. It was a print that didn't work. And well, what I did was collage it onto there to help create depth and texture. So it doesn't always have to be about the finished print. Just to give you an idea, I have only once used alcohol inks so far on a gel print, and it was just to literally clean a plate. I had all this grunge on a plate and I added some alcohol inks behind it. And now look at this. This would make a really cool card, just that as a background with a sentiment maybe in gold or silver or something on the front. That's where you can create some real magic. All right, so I'm not really doing with something with that. I may do something off screen because I know this is starting to get a little long. I don't know if you all want to keep hanging out. I know it's Saturday. It's time to take this print, this pull. All right, here we go. Oh, it's all coming off. Fine. I'm really looking for the middle. Oh, it's a little green. That's unfortunate. That's because I had that thing that was, it, see, it looked better when it was That's wet, gorgeous. didn't it? No, yeah, I, mean, I think still it pretty, still looks gorgeous. But yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's still pretty. Um, yeah, but it's got a little green in it. I like the grunginess of it. So let's see this one. That was my fault for not making for making sure not making sure that oh good lord, this wasn't this isn't this isn't dry enough, but it is what it is. We got some really insane stuff paid forward for another print. Ooh, 
kind of fun. Look at all that color stayed behind. This is kind of neat. I like that. That one's amazing. I'm going to have to get that stencil. That stencil is amazing. Oh, that's, that's like become one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. So look at all this that stayed behind for another print. Um, and that's, that's cool. I like that. That's a lot of really neat texture. And this is for multiples because you can see there's white underneath that from before. Um, yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right. So I'll leave it up to you guys. I can I can do a little bit more or we can call it quits for today. Up to you. I personally could watch you all day. <laughs> <laughs> But obviously, you know, I'm sure you yeah. had a life, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This was really a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me. I know that sounded like ending language, but uh, we will do this again. If you're interested in uh, joining me in a live session on Zoom, I will leave a link right here uh, for you to click. Join me. Um, maybe I'll even create a PDF uh, with some real quick tips for you. Uh, as well as some basic supplies to get started and some of my all-time favorite supplies. Thanks so much for joining me. We hit 50K. Woohoo! So excited. And uh, till next time. Bye, everybody. Funny thing, I don't know where my mouse is to end the session. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And don't forget to come back and uh, like and comment. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.